They're saying 600 watt hours per kilogram. If that number is real, it doesn't just move the goalposts. It pick up the whole stadium and drops it in a new city. Why this matters and what you'll get today. In the next few minutes, I'm going to break down what 600 watt hour per kilogram actually means in plain English. Why engineers are excited and worried at the same time. And how this changes the way we design cars, charge them and rate their safety. I'll also show you the one test that can make or break this kind of battery. And I'll leave you with a simple way to tell hype from reality the next time you see a big title. What 600 watt hour per kilogram really means without the fluff? Think of energy density like the size of a fuel tank for the same weight. If you double energy density, you either keep the same range with a much lighter pack or you keep the same weight and go much farther. Most EV packs today sit far below that 600 mark at the cell level and even lower at the pack level once you add cooling, casings, sensors, and structure bits. So hitting a true 600 at the cell level could translate into a pack that finally gives you sports car weight with road trip range. Or the same range you already get but with a lighter, cheaper chassis that stops like a dream and turns like a cat. The quiet trade-offs no one puts in the headline. Here's the catch. Raw cell numbers aren't what you drive. You drive a pack. Packs need cooling, plates, bus bars, fire barriers, foam, sensors, and the whole BMS brain. That overhead drags the final number down, and the chemistries that reach very high energy density often push up against other limits, like cycle life, heat tolerance, fast charging behavior. If an ultra-dense cell hates heat or swells when stressed, engineers have to add more cooling or slow the charge curve, which chips away at the real-world advantage. On paper, you win big. On the road, the car only wins if all the boring details play nice. Thermal runaway is the elephant in the room. When you pack more energy into the same space, anything that goes wrong goes wrong louder. At high energy density, your thermal headroom shrinks. That means your cooling system and software needs to catch problems earlier and react faster. If the chemistry needs higher operating temperature to reach those big numbers, you're, you're spending energy to keep it warm. If it hates heat, you're spending energy to keep it cool. Either way, the car has to babysit the pack more aggressively and the BMS becomes a difference between a miracle and a mess. Here's how a real BMS would handle a 600 watt hour per kilogram cell. Imagine your car's BMS as a super strict coach. It watches three things every second. First, how much energy flows in and out. Second, how the voltage and temperature shifts when the car rests or punches it. Third, how the internal resistance changes with the age with the high density cells. With a high density cell, the coach gets even stricter. Charge power ramps up only when the cell temperature is in the ideal, ideal spot. If it's too cold, the car warms the pack and slows charging to prevent lithium plating. If it is too hot and the car cools it and trims the current to protect itself. That coach also limits the top and bottom of the state of charge window a little more tightly at first until it learns how the pack behaves in your climate and driving style. In the other words, the big headline number won't feel big unless the software trusts the hardware. Before any of these hits a driveway, the cell has to survive abusive tests and give decent life under fast charging, heat, and deep cycling. Engineers push cells through calendar aging to see how they fade just setting, then cycle aging to see how they fade with use. They measure gas generation and swelling. They can they scan for dandrites, they slam it with current pulses to watch internal resistance climb, and they try to light it on fire in it. And they try to light it on fire in a controlled lab so you don't have to. Then they run whole packs on shakers and in thermal chambers because a great cell can still become a mediocre pack if the structure traps heat or the coolant channels are in the wrong place. The moment of truth isn't a press slide. It's the first time a full-size pack meets three targets at once, a solid fast charge curve that doesn't drop off a cliff above mid-state of charge, Stable temperatures across all modules with no hot corners and a cycle life that still looks healthy north of a thousand full cycles under normal use. If the pack can heat those three, 
Now you're looking at lighter cars that drives better, charge faster, and keep their range longer. That's not just a new battery, that's a new playbook for EV design. Now picture a mid-size SUV that loses 100 kilos without shrinking the cabin. Braking distance is tightened. Ride gets calmer because the suspension isn't wrestling a bowling ball. You cruise with less energy per mile because you're, you're hauling less mass. Charging stops gets shorter not only because the cells can accept more power in a sweet zone, but, but because a smarter BMS can keep it in that zone more often. And if the automaker chooses to keep weight at the same level, now you are the person who leaves home at 80% and, and still skips the charger on a long day. This is the questions you should ask before believing any number. Ask if the 600 watt hour per kilogram is a cell, module, or pack number. Ask at what temperature and C rate it was measured. Ask how many cycles until the cell drops to 80% capacity. Ask for the fast charge curve shape and whether it needs preconditioning to hit the headline power. Ask what safety tests it passed and what containment looks like if a cell fails. These aren't nerdy details. These are a difference between a number that sells you a dream and a number that shows up in your driveway. Even if the first generation misses the moon, some wins are locked in. Better electrode engineering and smarter electrolytes tend to trickle down to the cells you actually buy, improving charge speed and cold weather performance. Also, manufacturing upgrades reduce cost and variation, which means fewer warranty headaches and better consistency from pack to pack. And the software that was built to hurt a wilder chemistry ends up making today's chemistries safer and quicker. Because the same logic preheat here, taper there, protect this module still applies. If a real EV pack leveraging 600 watt hour per kilogram cells lands with a healthy cycle life, a safe thermal story, and a strong fast charging curve, it's a milestone. Not because a lab number went up, but because it changes what cars can be, lighter to charge and calmer to live with. If the first wave lands with the heavy limits, it's still progress. Just not the fireworks headline suggests. Either, Either way, the next big gains won't come from one magic ingredient. They'll come from the chemistry plus cooling plus structure plus software, all pulling in the same direction. Whenever you hear a battery claim, look for the trade-offs it admits. Higher energy density with no ward on cycle life. Be careful. Great cycle life with no fast charging data. There's your gap here. Insane charge rates with no temperature info, another red flag. Solid technical talks about its weak spots up front because that's how you build trust with the people who will actually drive it. 600 watt hour per kilogram could be huge, but only if the pack that reaches your driveway keeps its cool, ages gracefully, and charges fast without melting the calendar. If those three show up together, this isn't just better range, it's better cars. If you want to learn more about the battery management system in electric vehicles, tap the link below. Stay charged. Thank you.